So welcome back to another FIFA 22 career mode tips and tricks video. Today we have part two of the things you may not know about in career mode. If you play FIFA hardcore, of course, you might know everything that we're talking about in this video. But regardless, maybe you might not know about or you forgot about one of the things mentioned today. So I hope you still find this video useful. And if you do, make sure you leave a like for me. It always helps. And make sure you subscribe for more FIFA 22 videos like this. If you underperform in FIFA 22 career mode, this was something that we spoke about for many, many years. I called it dynamic crowds, but basically they did confirm it this year through their pitch notes as a new feature. EA put out on their pitch notes that if your team is underperforming in an important a match you might even see the crowd leaving early so of course we had to test this out so pretty much it was the first couple of games in the season my team was doing pretty bad coming in in 16th spot so we weren't winning any games and the fans were probably very upset we had a game against Norwich in the Premier League and as you can see in the first couple of minutes we've got a stadium at full capacity all the fans are cheering the team you know everyone's there no one's leaving early yet after half an hour we go down by three goals and this is when you actually start to see people leaving the game so after half an hour the people are back on the train going home now as the game gets closer to the end after 85 minutes we were down 4-2 and you can see that there's a lot more people that actually left if you take a look behind the goal there's a lot of empty chairs there so a lot of people have packed up and they're already at home probably watching the the rest of the match on their tv by now you can see that a lot of people have left that section so yeah it does work I've tested it it does work I don't know what the actual circumstances are but I think if your team's doing badly in an important match it should work for you as well this was one of those features that was necessary in career mode and at least we've got it so there's a quick way you can check whether your club has a real stadium or not in the game and you have to go through the career mode menus it's very simple so when a club has a real stadium let's say PSG here on the bottom right it will say ground and it'll tell you the name of the ground if we go to the Premier League you can see Arsenal has the Emirates Stadium there as their ground but what happens if a club doesn't have a real stadium what does it say well if you go to a club like Accrington Stanley that doesn't have a real stadium in FIFA 22 it'll just say City Accrington so it works with any other one as well like Wimbledon it says London as the city so that's a quick way to tell whether or not the club has a real stadium in the game so when you play FIFA 22 crew mode there is a lot of cutscenes that can take a lot of time and once you've seen them once you don't want to see them anymore so there is a way you can skip all those cutscenes first off you can hold the X down and it'll sort of give you a few seconds before it skips or you can hold the L1 and R1 to skip them straight away, which is a much quicker process as well. So we've got a cutscene here. You can hold down the X. It sort of gives you a few seconds. But if you want to actually skip it fully, just hold L1 and R1 at the same time. Press them and bang, straight through to the next scene. This happens a lot during the game. And I always skip the cutscenes because once you've seen them once, there's no point watching them again. Now this also works for cutscenes that happen before a game. As you can see, you've got the warm up stuff. You can hold down the X and that'll sort of give you a few seconds. But if you want to skip it fully, L1, R1 once again, and bang, you're straight into the next scene. And it also works with these ones as well. So instead of holding X, which you can to skip, you can keep pressing L1 and R1, and it takes you straight to the kickoff. I think it's good for you guys to practice using L1, R1 if you haven't already to skip transitions instead of pressing X or holding down the X to skip because you can save so much more time instead of watching the same cutscenes and stuff if you don't want to watch them anymore and uh, basically L1, R1 takes you straight there. Now this also is good for goals. If you concede goals or you score goals, um, if you keep pressing the X to skip all these transitions and stuff, you're just gonna keep loading up the next sort of uh, transition, like the replay and stuff. But if you score a goal and you don't wanna watch all the different transitions, you go L1, R1 and it takes you straight back to kickoff. As you can see, it saves you so much more time. It's also good if you concede goals as well. Instead of watching all the celebrations and that, you just go L1, R1 when you're angry and you go straight back to the kickoff. Now there's certain things in crew mode that come up as you play the game. You might see those things where it comes up under the scoreboard. It could be Champions League tables. It could be about a player or a transfer, something like that. And that might annoy some of you guys. You might want to turn that off because it does cover a good part of the screen as you play the game. I don't know how many people would actually turn it off, but there is a setting called score clock drop down under the visual settings and you can turn that on or off depending on if you want to see those things pop down from the scoreboard. Now if you're someone that concedes a lot of goals in FIFA 22 crew mode, then this setting is for you there is actually kickoff emotions you can use in your game whenever there's a kickoff flick the R stick up down left or right and you will see your player do some sort of emotion he might be angry depending on you know how they feel we're going to try another one I think there's more than one so we just need to um, keep skipping them so I'm going to go left this time and you can see Vardy there pointing to another thing he's doing like a little clap I don't know what he's trying to do there but he doesn't look too happy we'll try a few more here see if there's any difference so this time I'm going to flick it right and we'll see what he does so he claps so they're sort of different, you know, when you concede. You do get some different ones depending on which direction you go. I think there's one more we need to try out, and that's flicking it down. So we're going to flick it down here. Let's see. So Vardy, yeah, very angry at the goalkeeper for scoring four own goals. Now let's see if there's any, like, pre-game 
emotions that they do. So I'm going to flick it. Yeah, they sort of do the same ones. Yeah, so try it if you want. You know, it's in the game. Just flick the R stick before you kick off and you'll see your player doing some sort of animation. Let me know if you've ever used these kickoff emotions. I don't actually see it when I watch people play FIFA, so maybe a lot of people don't even know these emotions are in the game. So as you play games in crew mode, there are different ways you can actually control your game. So as you play on the field, you might want to jump into a sim. You can just press jump to sim, and it takes you straight to the visual sim. And then if you want to jump back in, you press the square, or if you want to do like team management or just watch the game as it goes along, you can do that from here. Like I said, you can jump back in very, very quickly in three seconds or less. You can also go to other settings here by flicking with the right. So you can jump straight to the result. So basically from the fourth minute here, we will actually quick sim and the game will be over. Or you can restart the game if that setting is available for you as well. But let's say you're winning like 4-0. There's like 20 minutes left. You can't be bothered finishing the game. Or you're versing a team and you're getting smashed and there's no other chance of coming back or something like that. Basically, if you don't want to finish a game, you can um, just go straight here, jump to result. This is something that I do as well, and basically you'll get a quick sim, and you can go from there. So a very, very useful feature there. So you don't even have to finish a game. If you don't feel like playing the rest of it, you can just jump to result and save a bit of time. Another crew mode tip I have is do not wait for the 30th of June, the last day of the season, to do your contract renewals. You have to do everything on the 29th of June, because on the 30th, you can't actually renew any contracts and stuff, which I think could be a little bit dumb. I think EA should maybe change that. But with Norwich here, we have players here that have one month or less, you can see a few there, and you have to get this done before the 30th of June, like I said. So if you want to renew, you just delegate, or you can do whatever you want, really, and you can accept that, and basically that refreshes their contract length. Now, if you make the mistake of waiting to the 30th of June, I'll show you what happens. So we're going to go right here, and as you can see, on the last day, you can't actually do anything besides check your emails, check your table, and check the news. Basically, you have to end the season, and you will lose any players that you didn't renew in time. So very, very important to remember the 29th of June, is the last day to get all your contract renewals done for players that have one month or less. So if you want to customize your gameplay in career mode, of course, you've got your sliders and stuff, but there's also some other settings here. You can adjust your difficulty like that. If you go up to legendary or ultimate, there is competitor mode you can turn on or off. This is like the play style of some of the world's best FIFA players. I don't really use this. I turn it off. But there's also a new feature this year called player-based difficulty. You can turn that on or off. Basically, what it's going to do is basically when you play against the CPU AI and you verse a team like PSG, Mbappe is going to stand out as a more dangerous player due to his attributes. So essentially, player-based difficulty individualizes the difficulty of each player. So you might want to turn that on to give you more of a challenge. At least check it out. It's a new setting that came this year if you haven't used it already. 